Hi, in this video I want to talk to you about stains and oxides. I get a lot of questions about stains and oxides from students in the studio and some of the questions are uh, what's the difference between a stain and an oxide and also uh, how do you use them? Do you put them underneath the glaze or over the glaze? So I'd like to clarify some of those questions and show you a few techniques about using stains and oxides. Here in front of me, I have a group of oxides here in this three, and this three is a group of stains. And some of the main differences between the two are, is one is these tend to be metallic compounds. We call them metallic oxides. And for instance, this is actually red iron oxide, and basically what it is is rust. And it's refined and it's screened down to a finer particle size. Um, and this one is called rutile, and it's very similar to ochre, which is something that comes right out of the earth in a very similar kind of color. Uh, this is cobalt, and it makes the color blue. And that's one of the things that's confusing about the oxides, is even though they look a certain way, when they go into a glaze, when they're finished, they may turn a different color. For instance, sometimes blue is made by adding this color and this color together in a certain glaze, and that turns blue. But when you look at the glaze, it's brown. That's one of the confusing things about oxides, is they tend to change colors. Now, when you're looking at the stains, the stains are a more refined version of an oxide. They're oct often different oxides combined together with other materials. They're cooked, and they're screened down to a very fine particle size, and they tend to be what you see is what you're going to get. In other words, this yellow is going to pretty much stay yellow most of the time. This is a pink stain, and it will stay pink most of the time. This is a blue stain. It's blue, and it actually will look blue when it's finished. Now, for our purposes as ceramic artists, basically what these all are are dyes that make color. And just like you would add dye to water to dye a fabric with, I add different parts of these materials to clay, glazes, or slips and they provide the color palette that we get. And, and you get a very wide range of colors when you start blending little bits of these different things together. But really, all they are is coloring agents. And I don't want you to get confused about oxide or stain because really you use, you use them the same way. And so what I want to do is show you a couple real simple ways that you use both oxides and stains the same way. And I also want to show you a little bit about just how I make the oxide and the stain. Now, when I make the oxides and the stains, what I do is I take an equal part of the stain or the oxide and an equal part of the flux. In this case, this is Gersley borate. I mix them together in water, and they come in these containers that are over in the glazing area. And this one's labeled lavender. It's lavender stain, and it has a number, and that corresponds with the number of that particular stain. Oxides are very similar. They're all water-based. I mix them with water. And then that's how we use them for our decorative uh, using over or as a stain. And I want to show you several different ways about how to do that and also some examples of some of the things that stains and oxides are good are used for. Now there are two basic ways that stains and oxides are used to create ceramic surfaces. I have some examples of one type and this is on this piece, the stain or oxide was brushed right onto the bisque clay surface and then it was wiped off with a sponge, a wet sponge, and it pushes the oxide or the stain into the porous clay surface and it darkens some of the areas and leaves a highlight on other parts of the areas. And one of the reasons why this oxide is good for that is because it picks up all this detail this very subtle detail and texture and it creates a contrast between the dark and the light surface and it shows off all of that detail and if you put a glaze or some other surface on this you might have hidden all the, the intimate details that come in this piece, the facial features and this clothing that's sort of wrapped around it and this skeletal feature here and then there's nothing else put on the surface, this is, gets fired into the high firing and the oxide just burns or the stain just burns itself onto the clay and then it becomes a permanent patina or surface treatment. 
Now, this piece also has iron oxide used as a stain brushed onto the bis clay surface and wiped off with a sponge. There's nothing else put over the surface besides just red iron oxide. But one of the differences is the body of this piece and this sort of clothing, I left the iron oxide on very heavy and it turned almost a metallic kind of surface when it was finished because of the, the intensity and the concentration of the iron oxide solution. On the face, I rubbed a lot more of the oxide away and I got a different kind of look in that area. <clears throat> and you can see here, this, this bowl was the same kind of clay but it doesn't have any oxide on it at all and it has a different kind of coloration. Now this piece is a vessel, but it has a very interesting textured surface in this sort of window in the middle of it. And this is also done using iron oxide, brushed over this area, and then gently wiped away with a wet sponge or a damp sponge. And it just picks up the beautiful texture that was impressed into the surface on this clay. And that's a really nice way to use either an oxide or a stain to uh, embellish some kind of texture that you've already put into the surface of the clay. And again, if you tend to put a glaze on this, you might lose some of the delicate qualities that are on this surface, the textures that are involved. They're very delicate, some of them. And the, the oxide of the stain can kind of pick up that surface and highlight it a little bit better than by using a glaze. This piece use the same technique as the three previous pieces that I showed you, only after the oxide was put on and wiped away, you can see the dark green is in the, the texture or the background area of this textured surface. It's wiped away with a sponge that creates a, a lighter area here in the center. And then after that dry good, this was dipped into a glaze, and in this case it was celadon to give this green tint to the surface. This is a, another way that you use stain or oxide, but in this case you put glaze over the surface of it. And here I have a piece of clay that I cut with a wire and I'm going to use this, I'm going to stain the surface of this with an oxide, but what I mean by staining is I take some of the material, I put it in, a, this again is red iron oxide, and I'm just going to brush it very haphazardly onto the surface. Got some newspaper down here so I don't make a big mess. And once I get the surface of this covered, And as you can see, I'm wearing gloves because this stuff isn't so great to get on your hands. It will stain. And if you have a cut on your hand, or it, it is a metallic oxide, so it's probably not something that you really want to get into your system. And I have a cut on my hand, so I want to be sure that I don't get any of this stuff in that cut on my hand. Okay, now I've painted the surface just sort of randomly all over and then I've got a water in this bucket and it's a sponge and I rinse the sponge out and then I drag it over the surface and you can see I'm starting to pull some of this material off and I'm also pushing the oxide into the clay so that it's not sitting right on the surface And I do this for a few passes with the sponge, and then the sponge gets dirty and I have to clean it. Otherwise, I'll just keep smearing the oxide back and forth onto the surface. And depending on how much of this oxide that you remove, uh, has a lot to do with the kind of effect that you get. If you remove a lot of it, it can be very subtle, 
Uh, if you leave a lot of oxide on the surface, it'll get pretty dark and can look quite metallic. And that's just a decision that you have to make uh, for your individual piece. You have to decide what kind of surface, how you want to treat that surface. Oh, that looks pretty good. And, uh, you know, another, uh, again, with the glazing, if I had glazed this particular surface, I may have lost a lot of the qualities of the, of the clay work that I like. So by using something just to sort of put into the surface and just have it very lightly cover the surface, uh, I show off a, a lot of the work that is in the clay piece. And in this particular case, that's part of the piece that I really want to exploit is this kind of raw quality. This piece now is ready for firing. I've got the iron oxide stain surface on there. Nothing else has to be done to it at this point. It goes back and gets fired in the glaze firing and then it'll be finished. Another way that I use stain, and it's a very similar way, is this is a cup and I have this detailed, carved, scratched out designs on the sides of this cup. And so what I've done here is I've painted the black stain onto the raw bist clay surface. I'll just show you how I do that. I have some black stain right here. I always want to mix this stuff up. All of the oxides and stains are essentially little bits of powdered metal and they will sink right down to the bottom of this solution. So you really need to make sure that you're always stirring them up and get the particles in solution. And then I just paint this down the surface and try to fill in all the the recessed areas that I use. I made these marks using a pencil carving into the surface of the clay when it's wet and I want to highlight those marks in the glaze fire. Okay, so now I've got this painted all around. And for this one I have a little smaller sponge. Wring the sponge out well and then just start removing the oxide by wiping it away. See now I just have the black basically left, the dark black left in the line that I had on the surface. Okay, that looks good. Uh, this is one of the pieces that I've stained and already wiped everything off. Okay, you can see how it picked up every little mark I had on the surface of this clay piece with this dark black stain. I wiped it away, sort of pushed it into the surface, and now I've, you can see every little mark I've made on the surface. Now for this piece, for the other piece I did, I wouldn't put anything over it, but on this one I'm going to put a glaze over this so that this is still a functional cup. And I do that by pouring glaze on the inside and just dipping the piece. Now that I have wiped this off with a sponge, the stain is into the surface. If I had not done that and I dipped it back into the glaze, some of the stain might come off into the glaze and might contaminate it. So anytime that you use the stain and then you're going to put glaze over it, you have to make sure that the stain is wiped into the clay surface and not just sitting like a dust on the surface or it will come off and tend to contaminate the glaze that you put it into. Uh, in this case, I should be okay because I've wiped most of my black stain away and pushed it into the surface of the clay enough where it should remain there when I put a glaze over it. As I mentioned to you before, oxides and stains are the primary coloring agents that we work with in ceramics. And when you see any kinds of color, besides white or a glassy clear, it generally has some kind of oxide or stain added to it. This is a, a beautiful plate made by Susie Rubenstein, who used to teach here. And this is a white glaze. It's the one, two, three, four white glaze we have in the studio. And then she painted, these are stains that she painted over the surface of the glaze before it was fired. 
if you try to paint the oxides or the stain onto an already fired surface, it would just run right off of it because it's so slick. While the glaze is still raw before it's fired, it has a way for the oxide or the stain to sit on top of that glaze surface. And then in the firing process, it melts and blends into the layer of glaze that's beneath it. Okay, this is a very nice example of using stains over a white glaze. Uh, this is one of my pieces, and this is using a variety of different colored stains. And uh, first I painted a design with wax, and that's where you see the kind of lightish color coming through. And then I painted the stains and oxides with a brush over the surface of this piece, and I had achieved quite a, a variation of color. Uh, because where I overlap different stains and oxides, they will blend and make another color. Um, generally, when you use an oxide or a stain to paint a decoration with, you always do it over a glaze, and most effectively, it's used over either a white or a clear base glaze. And the reasons for that is it's sort of a chemi chemistry thing, is that you put one of these colored stains and you put it over a colored glaze, there's stain or oxide in the glaze beneath it, and when they combine together, you're not quite sure what you're going to get at that point. So it's not that predictable when you put it over an already colored surface. You're not quite sure what you're going to get most of the time. So I have some examples here of some different stains and oxides, and I want